I'm off for the frying van. I'm putting socks on in case you guys are like, Destiny, what are you doing? Is there a surprise that you're reaching for? No. So throughout the past few months, I feel like I have overly documented my journey with my book buying ban. And I have a lot of thoughts on it because part of the reason that I did want to publicly say it is because I did want to be held accountable. And you guys pulled through with that. If I even stepped foot into a bookstore, I got so many DMs. Why are you there, bestie? Hey just my happy place. The main reason that I wanted to go on a book buying ban the past few months was because of my lump sum of a physical TBR that I have. And I really wanted to show myself that like with every minor inconvenience, you don't need to like go buy books, which I did learn. I did take that away from this. Like it feels very weird. Like even today thinking about going into a bookstore because it's so instilled in my brain to like not go into a bookstore because I would want to buy stuff naturally but i do feel like it did show me to focus on my tbr the goal that i wanted to personally reach was red i don't know if that makes any sense yeah would i ever do a book buying ban again i don't think one of this nature i think maybe like if there are months where i'd be like hey maybe we're just gonna buy like three books this month we're not gonna like over go overboard like you do i feel like that's healthy to like cap yourself listen i love to buy and read books and as so many people have said i feel like reading books and buying books are two completely different hobbies and i am a book collector that's why i like to buy multiple copies of different books that i have because i like to collect books i want to have like my own personal library one day like that's a goal so i do buy books and collect them but i do still need to focus on reading them even though i'm off my book buying ban i do want to still try to focus on my tbr and shrinking it i am so happy that it's over though because I just like so many times in my day-to-day -day life, if I'm out, I'm like, oh, let's go into Barnes and just feel like if I want to buy something, I can. That's what we're doing today. We're doing our book shopping. Right now it is 9.40 a.m. and I'm about to go to the bookstore. I'm in Bloomington. If you guys are a frequent watcher of the channel and you're like, wait, where's Destiny at? I am in Bloomington. This is, I'm at Isaac's house. He lives in Bloomington. And I'm about to go to the bookstore. Now there's a local bookstore that I found last weekend called Morgan Stearns. If you guys follow me on TikTok, Instagram my bookstagram then you guys would have seen me post this and it is a local store in Bloomington and it is so cute it's so amazing there's a cafe it they have such a large expanse of a book selection it literally looks like a barn but it's an indie bookstore I am going to go there this morning first of all I'm going to go there and I want to go to the cafe and I'm going to sit there for a second and just kind of like articulate my thoughts a little bit and put it into like a notion spreadsheet that I make of like the books that I want to buy to kind of remind myself that there are books that we're here for not to just go like I think I'm gonna go and we're gonna sit and we're gonna have a nice little moment and I'm going to organize all of my thoughts and the books that I want to buy and then we're gonna go to the book shopping book buying ban is over let's uh take all of our stuff and I'm gonna go to the bookstore Let's talk about the first books of this haul, and those books are from none other than Book of the Month. You guys know I absolutely love Book of the Month. If you guys don't know what Book of the Month is, you must be living under a rock if you don't know the joy of having this blue box arrive to your front doorstep apartment mailbox or wherever it is. Book of the Month is a super popular, fast online growing book service for readers. Their team vets hundreds of books each month and curates their own little selection for you guys to choose from of new and early release titles. That way you guys can spend more time reading and less time researching. Their mission is to help promote new and emerging authors and help readers find books that they love. And doesn't that just sound absolutely fantastic? But do you want to know something that sounds even better? Getting your first book for just $9.99 with the code CIDER that's going on in the month of September. That's right, guys. If you guys have never used Book of the Month before, you guys can get your first book for just $9.99 to get one of these for just $9.99 with the code CIDER. So speaking of these books, I have two selections for this month that I'm excited to share with you. First of all, it is The Stranger Upstairs. This is a thriller book about a famous blogger who buys a famously haunted house thinking that it'll be fun to renovate it. If you're a fellow scary movie watcher, you know where that is already going wrong. And then we have you again. That's how I say this. This is basically about two people that hate each other, but then maybe they somehow fall in love. And you guys know that I've been obsessing over fall recently. And if you guys look at the foliage on this book cover and like the setting, 
that's everything to me also again always the book of the month bookmark shout out we have this one that says in the throes of prose literally i have such an expansive collection of these bookmarks they're everywhere in my room but they always pop up at the times that i need them the most just like book of the month always there when i need them the most thank you guys so much again to book of the month for sponsoring today's video don't forget to get your first book for just 9.99 with the code cider and let's get into the rest of the book haul we're starting off strong with these two books as I was hoping it to be. It was just very busy in there. And hold on, the, nothing against the bookstore, by the way. This is just like a personal thing with me. I was like super excited to go to the bookstore because I was like, okay, cool, it's the morning, it's gonna be chill. There were so many people when I pulled into the parking lot and I was like, what is going on? I realized, I think there's even like, they were doing like a reading or there was like an author or something like for a bunch of kids. So there was just so a bunch of kids in the store running around like whatever and so i was sitting there and i just started getting like the worst anxiety because there were so many people and i was trying to like go around and i didn't want to like get people in shots that they didn't want to be in and i was also like looking at the books and just losing focus like i just couldn't even remember like what i was here for there were so many points where i was like disassociating i was like oh i can't do this on that note it is successful because i did buy five books definitely for the second half of this video i am going to go to barnes and i'm debating on whether or not i want to go to barnes today maybe i'm going to edit a separate video and then if i can get that up then i might head on over to barnes or i'll just go tomorrow but also like i'm ready i feel like i have a cute outfit on so i kind of want to go today this bookstore though like if you guys are in this area or even like want to go to bloomington it is such a beautiful independent bookstore there's a cafe i was too scared to try the coffee because i got confused and i couldn't really read the chalkboard and then i was like okay i can't do it perks of having chronic crippling anxiety and so i was like okay i'm just gonna walk around so i like sat down and i compiled the list of books that i wanted to buy i was gonna walk around and i did find quite a bit of them that I wanted actually there's I bought one that was on my list anyway but it's so cute there are so many different spots too and they do like different things so there's literally a spot for like their book club picks they had a dark academia shelf that last week it was the Barbie shelf and this week it's a dark academia shelf they have like new releases fiction like so many different little spots they're up to date on everything there's a cute little cafe and they have little like local and small business items so like for example like these little things you get for your keychain I got this one I was debating between this one and they have one for the new barbie movie there was literally one where it said ken's mojo doja casa house and there was the barbie dream house but i got this one because i am in the fall vibe i got this one and it says um central perk coffee shop 199 lafayette street new york new york 112 so i'm literally about to put that on my keychain watch this Bada bing, bada boom. Anyway, let's stop with jingling the keys and get into what you guys really care about. The first five books of this book haul. The first book that I got was actually the one that I was most excited for because since it is the fall Halloween-y season, this is a book that I saw and I was really, really wanting to get because I love just like fun books like this like for example the x hex and the kiss curse by aaron sterling i those books are perfect if you're wanting in october read those books in october because they are the perfect setting they are so folly they are just the perfect vibe for fall and i really am on the lookout for more of those books especially in october and this is one of those and it is my roommate is a vampire and it's about this girl 
and they're in Chicago and she gets this apartment that's like super cheap. She's kind of confused as to why it's so cheap in such a nice apartment. And then her neighbor is like super nice and he only, he like sleeps all day and goes to work at night and she's convinced that he's a vampire. And it's a fairly short book so I feel like it'll be like a short, cute, easy read in the October season. Same thing with this one. This would be my first Agatha Christie book ever, I'm pretty sure, unless like I am missing something. Agatha Christie is the most widely published author of all time, outsold only by the Bible and Shakespeare. Her books have sold more than a billion copies in English and another billion in 100 foreign languages. She died in 1976. So these books are all older and this one is Halloween Party. So all of her books are kind of like murder mystery vibes. So this one is about, it says, at a Halloween party, Joyce, a hostile 13 year old, boasts that she once witnessed a murder. When no one believes her, she storms off home, but within hours, her body is found still in the house, drowned in an apple bobbing tub. That night, Hercule is called in to find the evil presence, but he first must establish whether he's looking for a murderer or a devil murderer. And I just feel like, again, this is gonna be a just super, fun read in the month of October, especially since it's literally called Halloween party. As well as I bought The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood because this was actually so funny. If you guys have watched my TBR game video, which if you guys haven't watched it, go watch that because that is one of my favorite videos that I've made in a while. One of the prompts that I got was to read a banned book and in this bookstore they literally had like a little display of just filled with banned books which is actually super helpful because I was like oh wow seeing them on the shelf but one of them is The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood and I didn't um, own this already so I wanted to buy it because this was the book that I did pick for it because I just read The Grace here and that's described to be The Handmaid's Tale meets Lord of the Flies so I wanted to read The Handmaid's Tale and isn't this a show? I don't know I believe it's a show Anyway, and then I am literally next weekend when I'm filming this, I'm going to the beach for a week, which is <laughs> so funny because I feel like I am somebody who's not stopped talking about fall. We're going on a beach vacation. Last little hoorah. hoorah. Last little hoorah. So I found this sitting on a table. They give us like the newest fiction that's released in paperback. And this just seemed like the perfect read on the beach. So it's called Summer Sisters. And it's basically about these two best friends in the summer of 1977. And you guys know that I love the 70s, 80s. Like I just love reading my books set in that time. And it's about two friends, Victoria and Caitlin. And Caitlin invites Victoria into her world where she's more like privileged. They go take vacations on Martha's Vineyard and they're best friends. And then it's years later and Caitlin is inviting Victoria to her wedding because she wants her to be the maid of honor, but they like haven't talked in years. And Victoria goes because she wants to figure out like what happened between them and the one summer that like everything went wrong. And I just feel like this is like a literary fiction. And sometimes on the beach, I just like to read a literary fiction where it feels like I'm just reading somebody's life. And I'm super excited to take this one with me on vacation. And then of course, I was actually surprised that they had this because this is like my first time in like an indie bookstore like this. And I don't know like how fast so they get new releases because I don't know how like the backside of like owning a bookstore works even though I do one day it is my goal within like the next five years which is very scary to say but within the next five years I do want to open up my own bookstore somewhere like that's just something that I've always like thought about and never thought it was possible but now I feel like it's something I could do and I really want to do that so I am intrigued to like learn the backside of things. We have the Brothers Hawthorne which me and Sarah talked about this in our latest podcast episode. If you guys aren't listening to Bookmarked you guys should be listening to Bookmarked. It's a spinoff series to the Inheritance Games in a very interesting twist because with the Inheritance Games you only got Avery's point of view. With the series it's the same exact characters like you have all the same characters but it's just in all of the brothers point of views. You think it's in all the brothers point of views but this book only has Grayson and Jameson's point of view and I was under the impression that we were getting like the other brothers point of view but I guess not but I am very interested to see like what this holds in store especially because I love Jennifer Lynn Barnes and her writing loved the natural series I love the inheritance game so I'm very excited to see what she does those are the five books that I got from Morningstar what I'm gonna do is I'm going to edit and then I depending on what time it is after I edit because the closest Barnes to here is like an hour away depending on that maybe we'll hit up a Barnes today and buy some other books who knows okay guys so i'm actually insane a little bit and i was at the house and i was editing and i just hit like a hard place because you guys know me 
by now. You guys watch my videos. If there's something else going on in my brain, can't focus on anything. But my mom texts me and she's like, I would, I would meet, meet you, at, you the at the barn. Like if you want to drive to the barn, but it's an hour away. I drove to the barns. Here's my mom in her car and we're about to go into the barns right here. <laughs> I'm literally actually unhinged a little bit. Like, that's not really okay. books in the back how smart was that it's okay we're gonna do a haul later i just got done being inside of barns me and my mom went in there fun fact there is no barns in bloomington and i live about an hour away so i came to this barns it's an hour away did i already explain all of this i think i did so i came here and she met me up here because she just offered to this is melting oh no so came in here she thought I was talking to her. I came in here to buy the rest of the books that I wanted to buy in Barnes. And there are some that weren't in here. And there were some that I knew I was going to have to order on Amazon. But there's going to be a part two probably in like within the next week or so. That's going to come out of me buying books and unboxing them. Be on the lookout for that. But I got, I don't know how many books I got. But I kind of went crazy. And honestly, most of them are fantasy books. I just picked a ton of fantasy books because i feel like in the fall in winter time like i am in a fantasy mood i had a list that i compiled this morning obviously in this video but i just kind of wasn't even looking at the list like i had stuff in my mind of what i wanted to buy and i just kind of went with like whatever i saw there and like reading the back of books like i also wanted to do that just like reading the synopsis of them and seeing if i wanted to read them so i also did that but i'm gonna drive back to bloomington now an hour back to Bloomington. Love you. Love you. Anyway, what was I saying? I think I'm gonna go get gas. Probably find an energy drink. I've been listening to the Zayden Heath podcast and they talk about uh, the energy drink accelerator. Should it be fun? Let's go in and see if I can find one. And also I did go get an accelerator. I thought that they were alcohol whenever I heard people talk about them. So they kind of look like, do they not look like an alcoholic beverage can? Would get other flavors, did get another flavor. Anyway though. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do the final portion of this haul. Oh my gosh, wait, looks like I have a bob right now. Psych, this is my hair. Okay, I'm very just out of it. Let's talk about all the books that I bought at Barnes. Kind of went a little crazy. Well, no, I did go a little crazy. I did go crazy. I still, I don't know, like it felt so weird to be inside of a bookstore. I only went to a bookstore like a few times throughout the past few months because I couldn't let myself just like sit in a bookstore. I couldn't do it. It felt weird being in there and I had very bad anxiety being in there, but I know that you guys just care about the books. So I don't know how many books I bought. We can keep account i also literally was walking through and had like the notion list on my phone and then just like was buying anything that i wanted because it's my world we're just gonna do like one of these and we're just gonna grab and pull okay we have a hardcover oh i was so surprised to see this because i've been seeing people post about this and if i'm not mistaken this isn't a new book it's just like i think all of the blake got picked up yeah this was from 2018 all of these blake got picked up by like a publisher so they've been like revamping some of her books and their covers and such and this was one of them and i saw somebody post this the other day okay i can already see the comments i get it guys oh this is the worst this is the worst it's not coming off in the like no this is the worst okay 
well that sucks anyway i had seen somebody post this and i was like very perplexed about it since then have been wanting to buy it because of the i can't remember the storyline of this book but i remember reading it and immediately putting it on guys look at how beautiful like the inside of her covers i'm pretty sure one for my enemy does this as well like look at that that is so beautiful something that i love about olive blake is that she's always included these like illustrations as a part of her books i remember i still have the indie version of the atlas six and that it had like the drawings of the characters in between the chapters like it was so good i just love that but anyway this is viola is a struggling real estate agent and a vampire but her biggest problem currently is that the house she needs to sell is haunted the ghost haunting the house has been murdered and until he can solve the mystery of how he died he refuses to move on fox is a medium and all and though he is most definitely a shameless fraud he isn't entirely without his uses seeing as he's actually the godson of death when viola seeks out to help her with the ghost infested mansion he becomes in inextricably involved in a quest that neither he nor violet expects with the help of an unruly poltergeist a demonic personal trainer a sharp voiced angel a love-stricken reaper and a few mindfulness practicing creatures v and fox soon discover that the difference between a mysterious lost love and an annoying dead body isn't as distinct as they thought this seems like the perfect book for fall next up oh okay so i got little white lies this is a book that I had always seen at Barnes and like didn't even realize that Jennifer Lynn Barnes wrote it. Since I loved the Inheritance Games and then I read the Natural series and loved that, I wanted to read the rest of her books and so I found these and somebody told me about these. So this is Little White Lies. This is another YA and I'm pretty sure says 18 year old auto mechanic Sawyer did not expect her estranged grandmother to show up at her apartment door and offer her a six figure contract to participate in debutante season and she definitely never imagined she would accept but when she realizes that immersing herself in her grandmother's society might mean discovering the answer to the biggest mystery of her life her father's identity she signs on the dotted line embraces herself for a year of makeovers big dresses bigger egos and a whole lot of bless your heart when somebody commented and told me about this they said like if you love like rich people drama like this is the book for you i also did get the second book which is deadly little scandals okay I'm reaching my hand in oh okay so then we have business or pleasure by rachel lynn solomon Fun fact, this is the author of the X Talk and I used to have that book and then I accidentally like gave it away one time when I uh, sold some books like a few years ago. Since then whenever I see the X Talk I'm always like wanting to buy it but then I just remember that I gave it away and it just feels like, I don't know, something about it. Business or pleasure, this one seems interesting and I just love the cover. Reaching back in, okay, <gasps> okay, okay. The amount of stickers is honestly insane. We have The Long Game by Elena Armas. And this is so odd because I read the Spanish Love Deception by this author and didn't like it at all. And I haven't read another one of her books since then. So you may be like, okay. But the other day on me and Sarah's podcast when we talked about this being a new release and I read the back of it, I don't know, just something about it. It seemed very like interesting and rom com to me and I'm very, I just am intrigued to see. She works at like like a sports management of some sort like in that she makes a mistake so her dad sends her to a small town where she has to coach these like little girls and their soccer team and she's trying to enlist the help of him i think his name's cam yes cameron that he needs to help her because he's like an ex like superstar soccer player and it's very much giving rock bottom girl by lucy score both me and sarah said that on the podcast and i thought that like as i was reading the synopsis that it was giving rock bottom girl and that one was a three stars for me so i'm excited to see what this premise gives me okay okay we have the prison healer now there are multiple reasons that i bought this book first of all i saw tiktoks about it like two months ago right after i went on my book buying van i saw somebody raving about this book on tiktok <laughs> that's just how my life goes and sarah read this the other day and she said that the book was kind of slow but then the end makes up for it and i looked at her and i was like all right we're gonna give this a shot but also guess who has a blurb on the front of this book none other than sarah j mass herself and she says lynette is a masterful storyteller and must read for any fantasy lover and if sarah j mass recommends it it's going on the tbr i do want to read that this month though because i write whenever somebody's like this has a crazy ending i'm like now i have to know thanks so much okay this one's odd 
because I was just like at the table and I think I was low-key anxious and my mom was like have you even heard about the book I was like nope just read the back so that's when stars come out this author just had her own table so I was very intrigued and this is YA fantasy okay I didn't know that bloom published YA but this is when stars come out by Scarlett St. Clair but this author does like do a lot of like Greek mythology retelling so if you're into that you may like her but this is Anora can see the dead and turn spirits into gold coins two things she would prefer to keep a secret as she tries to lead a normal life at her new school after all she didn't change her identity for nothing but hiding her weirdness is just one of many challenges by the end of her first day she's claimed the soul of a dead girl on the campus and lost her coin blah blah blah, blah. there's i don't really understand the back now that i'm like reading it at home but i'm still excited this is still a sleigh so when the stars come out don't know what to expect oh this is so funny because this is the other book so i've seen this cover so many times like in so many different places so this is king of battle and blood this is by the same author this one's an adult romance fantasy and this is a retelling of adrian no, is this a retelling i don't know but this one is about this girl and she considers her wedding day to be a death day to end a years long war and protect the people of her kingdom she is to marry the vampire king adrian and kill him but her assassination attempt is thwarted and adrian warns that if she tries to kill him again he will raise her as the undead faced with the possibility of becoming the thing she hates the most she seeks other ways to defy him and survive the violence and political of his court enemies to lovers she's trying to kill him and they fall in love sign me up i'm very much in like a fantasy mood i feel like the fall time specifically brings out like my fantasy era okay oh okay so i have a video idea that i'm wanting to do probably in october and this book this is a hint this book's a hint because i wanted to get the most popular ones in the genre so this book's a hint this is a deadly education by naomi novick and i still don't really understand what this book's about like i think this girl is at this school and she's supposed to be like this evil being like dark queen of the world is i think what they call it yeah and, but she's not, and like she doesn't want to be this dark queen, but she hates this guy named Orion. I have no clue what this is about. I know that people really love this book. When was this published? All 2020. Oh, so this is like fairly new. Yeah, 2020. Cool. Okay, what's next? What's next? Oh, I got The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. I just talked about this in my wrap up if you guys caught that. This is honestly like the last book of Riley Sager's that I like really, or have I read all of his other books? Have I read all of his books? I highly doubt it. But this is the last one that seems like interesting to me. This is The Last Time I Lied and this takes place at a summer camp. So two truths and a lie, Vivian, Natalie, Allison, and Emma played it all the time at Camp Nightingale. But the games ended the night Emma sleepily watched the others sneak out of the cabin into the darkness. The last she, or anyone, saw of them was Vivian closing the cabin door, hushing Emma with a finger pressed to her lips. Now a rising star in the New York art scene, Emma turns her past into paintings, massive canvases filled with the dark, gnarled branches that cover ghostly shapes in white dresses. When the paintings catch the attention of a wealthy owner, Camp Nightingale, Francesca implores Emma to return to the newly reopened camp as an art instructor. Wouldn't she like to put the past to rest? Put your faces in the same dark lake haunt nightingale where Emma is even assigned to the same cabin she slept in 15 years ago. Not everything is the same. The only security camera is pointed directly at Emma's door and long hidden cryptic clues that Vivian left behind begin to resurface. Soon Emma finds herself sorting through lies from the past while facing mysterious threats in the present and the closer she gets to the truth about Camp Nightingale, the more she realizes that closure could come at a deadly price. So this one, I just really love the idea of summer camp and like when a thriller is set at a summer camp, it gives me huge slasher vibes. So I'm very excited for this one and I do plan on bringing this on vacay with me because last little remnants of summer and we're talking about a summer camp i just kind of i like that okay next up we have a realm breaker by victoria aviard now i know nothing about this book oh look it has little it's illustrations on the inside as well and this is what i mean guys when i say half cover see how this doesn't meet the end see how it doesn't meet the full way anyway this is the same author of the red queen series right yeah the red queen series so tired squire forced to choose between home and honor an immortal avenging a broken promise an assassin exiled and bloodthirsty and a pirate's daughter the ward lost hope the heroes may be gone but the fight for the world has only just begun and that's the only thing that's on the back of this book so i know nothing else about it and you may be asking destiny why did you pick this one up and not you know her very famous series that you haven't read yet which is red queen and the answer would be i don't know 
Next up, I got the Queen's Assassin, and I literally got this because my mom looked at this cover, and she was like, oh, I wonder what that's about. Like, that looks interesting. Then I read the back, and it seems that it's about Calden, and he is the uh, Queen's Assassin. And then we have Honey, who she's been training all her life to join the guild. There's a surprise attack that brings them together. I don't know. Literally, like I said, the only reason that I got this book was because my mom was like, that looks interesting. And then I was like, you know what? I will. You know what? This isn't a mom picks my books video, but you just turned it into one. These are the last two. Yeah, these are the last two. So I'm wanting some fun little fall books like I talked about earlier with the My Roommate is a Vampire. I really want some fun books like that. So when I went to Barnes, I was looking out for them, didn't find a lot of them. And there's one specifically that I really want that I'm going to have to order. But we have this one, which is Small Town Big Magic. And it's about this girl and she is like the like head like mistress not mistress oh my god owns a successful indie bookstore and she's the chamber of commerce president in the uh history of this little like town and then she figures out yeah she is attacked by creatures that shouldn't be real and kills them with what can only be called magic and she finds out that the last decade of her life has been a lie and that everyone in the town has magic and they're witches and all of her friends are witches and she's actually a witch but when she failed the witch magic test they like erase all of her memories of having magic and being a witch I just feel like it'll be a fun little cute read. Then she has to deal with old complicated feelings for a childhood friend. Cranky yet gorgeous local farmer Jacob. Literally exactly. And then last, I got Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. Look, first of all, look at this. Look at how floppy that I've never had a book that's this floppy in my life. You would look at this and I thought maybe this is like a large print. Because like usually when a book is big and floppy like this, it's like a large print. Nope. Do you see that font? Do you see that font size? I'll just, yeah, do a close up. Teeny tiny. Page is long and the book is thick. All right, but anyway, these are some, I have been trying to branch slowly, like dip my toes slowly in the water to adult fantasy because it's just a lot more intimidating and a little bit more complicated. So I've been trying to dip my toe in the water, but I have recently came across Brandon Sanderson's TikTok and he is the most wholesome, sweet man like I, all i know is just from what i've seen on tiktok i know nothing else about this man so if there's like a scandal that i don't know about i have no clue he just seems like so nice and his little tiktoks that he makes that i wanted to try a book so i decided to do mistborn that is the haul that i have for you guys today we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen books that I bought from Barnes and we have the five books from earlier. So we have 19 books. If it's not the right math, literally don't take it up with me. I'm just a girl. But if you guys enjoyed this video, you guys know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff you guys know how to do. Like I said, there is actually going to be a part two of a book haul coming your way that's an unboxing. So keep your eyes peeled for that within the next few days and get excited. Okay, Destiny's back. She's back and better than ever. And I feel like I, I went ham. Don't get me wrong, I went ham. But I feel like I could have been way worse. And I didn't. As I'm really talking about making a part two for this video. I don't know. I'll see you guys when I see you. Peace.